What is what is that? What could that possibly? If, if you know, obviously, when you have things that are symbolic or, or um, you know, sacrifice or whatever, or how about parables? When parables are given, there's a lot of symbolism there to teach other truths. Maybe not every single minute detail of a parable is representative of something. It just kind of needs to be there for the story, right? And every single minute detail of preparing the Passover lamb, like maybe how you slice open the lamb, you know, we're not even given that information. Obviously, you have to do that, but not every single tiny little thing that's involved is going to have to be symbolic of anything. But I'll tell you what, when specific mention is made, like, no, you have to do it this way. There's a very good reason for that. Okay, this isn't just, just mentioned in passing. He goes on to make sure you guys know this is roast with fire. And the reason why is because Jesus Christ's soul, after he died on the cross, descended into hell. It didn't descend into paradise. It descended into hell. Hell is a place of fire and brimstone and burning and torture and torment. Okay? This is showing us that the lamb had to be roast with fire. The saving lamb, the lamb that was coming to save you from the destroyer, the same lamb, Jesus Christ, that saves your soul from the destruction of hell had to go to hell to pay for your sins. And look, I, I, I am shocked that there is so much backlash against this doctrine and that people are so ignorant of this and think that this is some like made up doctrine or something when, when it's all throughout the Bible and you want to talk about pivotal moments in Scripture? This, the, the children of Israel coming out of Egypt is referenced through the entire Bible. It happens very early in the Bible. And how many times is Moses and the children of Israel coming in and God bringing them forth with a, with a mighty arm, with a strong hand, bringing them forth? That is referenced over and over and over and over again because God stepped in and did something so great and so miraculous. He doesn't do all these miracles all the time, but he wanted to make sure he lifted up Pharaoh to the position he was in. He ended up hardening Pharaoh's heart because he wanted to make an impact on this world so that the whole world would know who the Lord is. So this is, this is an incredibly important event in world history that God has, has done this and the story of the children of Israel coming out of Egypt. It's referenced all throughout Scripture. It was designed that way. God intended for that to be a huge moment, just as huge as Jesus Christ then coming into this world and all the miracles and all the people that were healed and everything that was done during that time as well. There's so many other times in history where there's just no miracles really happening and definitely not to this magnitude okay so to have an event like this such an important doctrinal issue of the passover and people going oh yeah because okay, so, you tell me what does that mean if it's not referring if it's not symbolizing jesus christ's soul going to hell which is specifically talked about in acts chapter 2 that his soul was not left in hell and it's specifically told and interpreted for you in Acts chapter 2 that he, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell. It's specifically telling you, hey, that psalm is talking about Jesus Christ's soul not being in hell, not being left there, which means it was there. And again, I, I'm not going to take the whole time to preach this subject. It just boggles my mind that anybody can reject, any, any so-called believer in the Lord can reject this doctrine. I don't go as far as to say that if you don't <coughs> believe this, you're unsaved, but it boggles my mind that a, a Bible reader and a Bible believer can reject this doctrine of Jesus Christ's soul going to hell. It's, it's so evident. Read the book of Jonah. How about read Jonah chapter 2? What's that symbolic of? I mean, would you say that's symbolic of our Lord Jesus Christ? Because that also references, you know, uh, Jonah wasn't in the whale's belly going down into hell with the bars, the earth where the bars were about me forever. That's not Jonah physically being 
in the center of the earth. And then when Jesus Christ himself mentions that as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, the heart, the center, the place where hell exists, where even science will tell you it's a place of fire and brimstone. You don't even need science because you just look at the volcanoes <coughs> that shoot up fire and brimstone from the earth, from the nether parts, the lower parts of the earth. It boggles my mind that anybody can reject this doctrine.